breaking news. With weapons can we put an end to terror and save lives? Russia's latest large-scale missile strike against Ukraine on April 28 killed 26 people, including five children, according to President Volodymyr Zelensky's evening address. Today, our Air Force was successful in intercepting 21 of the 23 Russian missiles that were launched. Zelensky said in his video address that the number of lives lost to the terrorist state could have been much higher if not for this. And this proves, once again, that we can stop terror and save people only with weapons, he added. Zelensky also sent his condolences to the people of Yumen, a city in Cherkasy Oblast, which was hit by a Russian missile. In the early hours of April 28, a Russian missile struck a nine-story apartment building, killing 23 people, including four children. A missile aimed at the tranquil city of Yumen which annually welcomes tens of thousands of Hasidic pilgrims from around the world. According to Zelensky, only absolute evil is capable of releasing such terror on Ukraine. The national police had earlier reported that nine people had been hospitalized and that at least 18 people had been injured in Yumen. Firefighters say three upper floors of the apartment building were severely damaged in the attack. Russia also fired missiles at Dnepropetrovsk and the Kyiv region on April 28. Dmitro Kuliba, Ukraine's foreign minister, has said the country's need for F-16 fighter jets made in the United States is further demonstrated by the April 28 mass missile attack. Peace can only be achieved by forcing Russia to leave Ukraine. Kuliba tweeted that providing Ukraine with F-16s and shielding children from Russian terror would lead to lasting peace. Ukraine has requested F-16 fighter jets to defend its airspace from Russian aggression and bolster its upcoming counteroffensive. However, many allies, including the United States and Germany, have not supported the plan. As Kyiv prepares for a major offensive this summer, analysis of Ukraine's chances has been overwhelmingly optimistic as of late. Understandably, Western pundits are giddy about Russia's inability to make significant territorial gains since the winter. However, there is a possibility that we are being too confident in Kyiv's capabilities. Alexei Reznikov, the defense minister of Ukraine, is currently attempting to lower expectations. It's overheated for sure. Everyone's looking for a new win, he says. Before, we didn't have faith that we could win. We used to hope that Ukraine could hold on for a few more years. Those who have been predicting the imminent collapse of Russian forces should take his words to heart. Such caution is warranted, not only to protect against disappointment but also because it indicates the need to prepare for a dramatic acceleration of our backing for Kyiv. Ukrainian military officials claim they have been producing more than a dozen brigades worth of tanks, artillery, and engineers to throw at the Russians, with much of this equipment coming from the West. The general staff has been holding back reserves to build a corps that can have a decisive effect against the strengthening Russian defense while still maintaining a presence in the Donbass. This makes tactical sense, but it has drained Kyiv's reserves because the fighting, especially in Bakhmut, has been so expensive in terms of artillery shells and missiles.